we got two things left to do, and that is we need to put them in order, but we also need to talk about the price. <laughs> Let's talk about the taste first. Because after all, you and I are going to make our decision based upon taste. Okay, I'm going to taste through them now. Well, I know which is my number one and which is my number five, but in between, I'm not sure. Oh, fantastic. Let's do it. Was Oren the one that had the Costa Rica? That is correct. Number three... That, Old soul. that had a washed Ethiopia as the... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, yes, washed Ethiopia on a semi-washed... Yeah. Which uh, double-picked Sumatra. I think last is the Almoca, simply because I think there's, some, there's a dead coffee in there. There's a coffee... I'm not, argue, I'm not making this statement from experience with mochas, but it, maybe it's the other coffee, but there's a, there's a coffee that's, that's not in the green state, I don't think was really fresh. Either that or the coffee got staled a little in the bag. Something went wrong to sit on the coffee. My first choice, I kind of like Old Soul as, as my top coffee. I know you probably don't because it's not very wayward. Or uh, it's it's no it's it's the it's the one that I actually, uh, honestly I have uh, I buy this coffee several mm. times a year so I'm I'm a big fan of it and I've fallen in love with it so I agree yeah. with you that it's a that, kind that of would a be an easy complete and balanced choice. coffee it has the the full range of aromatics one might expect from a blend like this and but it has a kind of a yeah. floral and fruit character that's that I like it's a kind yes. of a coffee that for me is hard to stop stop drinking <laughs> yeah I I yeah. understand beautiful finish <laughs> it's not particularly heavy bodied or syrupy but it has a nice mouthfeel my number two would be hmm. Well, the, the trouble, I think, with the Orans is that it's not very exciting. It's kind of balanced and sweet, but... Trouble with number one is it's a little sullen to me. It may be a wayward, a wayward coffee, but it has, it's kind of sullen and defiant, doesn't it? seduce like the old soul and I'd probably put the Martinez next as number 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 two. Uh, yeah. number two so that leaves two extremes one we have a very distinctive but ultimately not particularly ingratiating or seductive cup with number one and we have perhaps too familiar and simple a cup with the Orans, number two. So I'm going to put them as tied. tied. Like a tie. Yeah. Well, let's see. It's Old Soul, Martinez, and then you've got his uh, tied number three, Orans yeah. and fresh there uh, roasted. Right. And then, there then you've is. got El, okay. uh, El Moca. Yeah. Yeah. I am so biased in this particular uh, arena of roasters because I, uh, I I was very happy with the, the the range we got, but I have to say, yeah, I I I can see that. I can see that. I can't I can't argue with your or your order at all, is what I would say. Um, and I, in fairness, I want to, uh, in a fairness to all of them, first of all, they sent me the coffees, but I uh, I did uh, buy them. But I would like, um, I know Oren 
had has right now a uh, he ran out of Ethiopians, so I, it might have been uh, different if he'd sent that. But because I was surprised, frankly, when he mentioned Costa Rica as a substitute. So you're sort of grudgingly going along with my order. Yeah, I'm not so grudgingly, perhaps, because again, I I love the old yeah. soul. I I that is my my choice, and uh, it's someone you know I taste everyone's coffee who comes through coffee con and I uh, and and others you know I I like coffee if I, if I were to put them in order I probably would put them close to the same way I probably would put uh, Martinez I'm good with them second and then uh, I probably put orange a little above fresh roasted just because the wayward and I I know what this coffee tastes like when he uses um, that's a, Sum a Sumatra and a uh, an Ethiopian. So <laughs> I am going to be in big trouble if I don't discuss money. Okay. <laughs> As I frequently am. Let me go through the costs. Uh, and I'll just go through in one, two, three, four, five. Uh, for, uh, fresh roasted was ten ninety five a bag. That's a twelve ounce bag, so it's ten ninety five for that, uh, which is ninety one cents an ounce. Two dollars and nine cents to brew the pot of coffee we had, and that's thirty-seven cents a cup. I mean, if anything argues for you know, home brewing coffee, it's uh, you know the people who always complain about they that don't was, have enough. That was number one in their life. Um, and what were one. the components of number uh, one again? A washed Ethiopian. And an Indonesian. That's all okay, they would so say. Okay, so it's probably yeah. a wet hold. Okay. Good. Yeah. And then uh, number two is the Orens. Uh, that's seventeen dollars a bag, twelve ounce bag. So it's a dollar forty-two an ounce. And then uh, that's three dollars and twenty-five cents to brew the pot of coffee. And then fifty. That works out to fifty-eight cents a cup. The components of it are uh, Costa Rica, fifty percent Costa Rican washed, and a fifty percent uh, Sumatra Mandaling. Uh, wet hold. It has to be wet hold. Wet I, wet hold. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I I think mm -hmm. it is too because I've had the Sumatran on this, and the Sumatran is absolutely wonderful. Third, Old Soul. That's twenty dollars a bag. Uh, that's a 12 ounce bag. That's a dollar 67 an ounce. Three dollars and 82 cents to brew the pot, and then uh, that's 68 cents a cup. So so far, more expensive a little bit. Uh, Martinez. Here we go to Martinez. Uh, surprisingly, 17 dollars mm. a bag. Uh, John's got this. Uh, that's reasonable price, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it says it's a pound, sixteen ounce bag. That's a dollar six an ounce, and then that's two dollars and forty four cents for the pot, and then that's uh, forty three cents a cup. That's really a comparative bargain, John. Almoca uh, is uh, thirty two dollars a uh, Almoca, thirty two dollars a bag. Twelve dollars, a twelve ounce uh, bag, two dollars and sixty seven cents an ounce. Uh, Six dollars eleven cents for to brew the pot, and that's a dollar nine per cup. Uh, the bargain would be John Martinez of the uh, of this particular cup, and considering it it placed second and it was the uh, least uh, second least expensive. Well, of course, we've been talking in the specialty industry for years about trying to figure out how much of the money that is spent in, in consuming regions that actually makes it to the producers, so very little. So it would be interesting if we had statistics about how much of these prices got to the, <laughs> the producers. Uh, we don't know. But at any rate, uh, I think that uh, they're surprisingly reasonable in price here in the consuming countries. I just hope the producers are getting their share. You know, this has been a very enlightening exercise because if you think about it, a kind of an amazing 
common understanding in the mouth, in the palate, in the nose, common understanding of, of what Mocha Java can be and what it means. And I think that's very impressive. You know, it, it just testifies to the long tradition of, of not just thinking about coffee types or names, but actually tasting, roasting, and blending. You know, it shows a kind of a coherence over the years, the decades, really. So I'm, mm -hmm. it's been very good exercise. Thank you for coming up with it and suggesting it and getting the coffees. And and thank you for the uh, you your contributions is probably my favorite blend, and uh, I really enjoyed all the digressions. The digressions make it for me hearing all the different background, and uh, I needn't have worried that you would have enough to uh, to contribute. To that. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when I thought about this, when I thought about this show this morning, as I was having breakfast, I thought, Ken, don't talk too much. Just find a way to make it tight. Well, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> and it's partly thanks to you because you kept I, I, asking me interesting questions. I want to evangelize people to go out and find a, a mocha java and try it. It's a it's a very interesting blend, and uh, it should be more common knowledge. And again, I think the the industry itself is guilty for, you know, not trademarking uh, things like Mocha Java, you know, s several hundred years ago. And hey, Kevin, you know, I'm I would take the opposite tack. There would be no way to trademark it. Be no way to set the blend. Because these, these yeah, coffees not only have the possibilities in terms of uh, origins shifted, but the origins, the, the kinds of coffee you can get in a given place in the world of, from these origins is always changing. So to me, the, the tribute here, the loyalty to a coffee tradition that is not, does not reside in names, does not reside in categories, but resides in the wow. nervous systems of the specialty coffee community. That is what's brilliant. Let's put it this way. In the year 2024, very interesting tasting it yes. with us. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.